Sometimes in order to, to know where you're going and, and where you are, it's useful to know how you, you got there in the first place. So um, my intention is to give a, a, a brief uh, summary of, of some of the thinking in terms of, of how we got to the European Open Science Cloud um, from the perspective of the research e-infrastructures and the research community, which may or may not correspond to how the Commission thinks it got here. But anyway, so this is the external perspective. So, if I can find the right button. Um, a long, long time ago, we had something called the grid and grid computing, for those of you with long memories. And although the technology's changed and the context has changed and so forth, the grid, in essence, um, was very similar to the cloud. The idea of the network, the internet, being the computer, being the computer resource, and providing that resource to the research community. Uh, now, although history has moved on, um, to today. Emerging from that whole grid discussion and so forth, um, there are some key European research e-infrastructures that coordinate uh, national resources. So we have GEANT, which coordinates, consolidates uh, networking resources across the member states of Europe. We have PRACE, again, coordinating access to HPC resources. Um, EGI coordinating access to high throughput computing and EUDAT uh, coordinating uh, access to uh, archive and data storage. Um, and those are what I mean by research infrastructures and the next phase is obviously cloud. Um, part of the problem if you're coming at this space from uh, a researcher is you're confronted by a whole wealth of um, initiatives, projects, e-infrastructures, organizations, from the, um, the four I've just mentioned, sort of providing communications, compute, data um, at the lower level, uh, to uh, various um, research infrastructures, which are subject-based uh, research communities using technologies to do their research, from arts and humanities to um, uh, to life sciences. Um, then on top of that, you have national resources, you have um, um, international um, expert groups, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then various projects and uh, smaller projects looking at, for example, authentication, access, identification. So I don't want to cover all of the organizations there, but the problem is that's what the researcher sees and they get confused. Um, so, one of the, if I can get off this slide, uh, one of the intentions is to try and simplify it. Uh, I've got lag, that's my problem. Try and simplify it, and uh, yes, you can't read that. The idea is that the, the researcher should have a common view of the European research infrastructure. Um, that the various organizations like GIANT, EGI, EUDET and so forth should prevent a single view of that uh, infrastructure that researchers can use. And we have a, a concept we talk about called commons, um, which is really a financial economic model uh, for services that are the public good. Um, and underpinning that um, it's a case of key principles that the resources are shared resources which belong and are shared by the community. Um, that the community should all own the rules and procedures for accessing those resources. Um, it should be a, a collegiate uh, governance model involving the community and the users in that governance model. Um, and there needs to be long-term, persistent care for those resources. Um, and that leads us on to um, another concept, open science. And open science is the evolution of the idea that resources funded by public money for research should be available to the research community and to the general public. 
Um, this started with open access, the idea of removing the paywalls to research publications and providing researchers free access to those resources, free being a movement fees. There has been, um, in recent years, discussion about freeing up the data uh, and um, encouraging researchers to share their research data and make it available um, because it's too commonly the case that the publication gets issued, but if you go back to the researcher saying, where's your raw data? I'd like to continue the research or validate it and so forth. They say, oh, it's on a USB stick in a drawer in my last office. Or, oh, I need to tidy it up. Can I get back to you? And you don't hear from them again. Um, and then open science is the next evolution of opening up the methodologies and the other resources, the actual procedures, the computing resources, the software, uh, um, the lab notebooks to science. So that the whole thing becomes open. And it consists of sharing research data, underpinning digital services and infrastructures, the scientific instruments, uh, as well as knowledge and transfer and training. Um, there's an interesting book on open science from uh, about three years ago, which points out that there are different motivations behind open science, from the democratic, that everything should be open and freely available, the public, uh, which is the idea that the public funds it, the public should have access, infrastructure, which is to simplify how researchers can access the digital infrastructure and the, the, the systems, pragmatic, um, that if you're sharing that knowledge, you're not reduplicating, so you can push the knowledge boundaries on, to measurement, which is where the policy people get really interested because they can measure <coughs> the impact and the metrics and decide where to put the funding next year. So a number of the infrastructures, EUDAT for data, OpenAir for open access, EGI for high throughput computing, GIAN for, for um, uh, communications and networking, and LIBA, which is the European Forum for Research Libraries, um, they put together a joint infrastructure vision, uh, some good words there, seamless, open access, collaborate, compute intensive science, trustworthy, etc. Um, and outline three principles behind this. It should be open, publicly funded and governed, research-centric, comprehensive, diverse, distributed, interoperable, service-oriented, and social. Running parallel to that, and this is my interpretation of, of DG Research, uh, back in 2014, DG Research held a consultation on what it called at the time Science 2.0, what was needed to transform science. Um, the key thing that came out of that, as well as the need for policy inventions, open access, citizen <laughs> science, etc., was that Science 2.0 didn't ring true with any, any uh, of the researchers. They preferred the term open science. The other thing that came out of this was that there should be a technology infrastructure to enable this, and the word cloud came into it. Hence, in the digital single market strategy under its uh, cloud strategy, there is mention in the text down at the bottom of a, a research open science cloud, a cloud infrastructure for encouraging sharing of research outputs, research data, research methodology, research software, research skills. And that was then encapsulated in the April initiative uh, where there are two key pillars, the open science cloud on that open science, that sharing infrastructure, the digital infrastructure to provide that, a European data infrastructure on the high th performance computing and quantum computing, and then the idea that this provides a foundation for extending those principles and the architecture and the technology to uh, the public sector, government, government as a service, uh, and um, SMEs and so forth. And there was also a high, uh, uh, DG Research had the high level expert group and again, their policy recommendations are very much around that open governance, open sharing, and so forth. And you can, you can look up the, the full report yourself. That came out uh, just over a month ago. Finally, um, as part of that European Open Science Cloud, 
uh, there was a funding call earlier in the year, ironically closed the day before a, a, a small referendum in the UK. Um, ironically, because the pilot project, which uh, has been funded, uh, is led by the Science and Technologies Funding Council in the UK. Um, we have lots of people volunteering. Maybe we could lead the project um, on the Friday, oddly enough. Um, so there's a number of work packages. There's a work package on uh, governance, uh, which is looking at... issues around um, how we combine the research infrastructures, the research communities, uh, give them an open governance structure which provides a code of conduct for the service providers, uh, seamless access and common standards and protocols. We have a work package looking at some of the underlying policies in areas such as how, what policies from the open science community do we need to enact in the uh, European Open Science Cloud what policies around procurement, uh, open procurement, uh, procurement in the research space, etc., uh, for cloud services, policies around data access, data protection, data assurance, data ownership, uh, copyright, particularly cop where we need copyright exemptions for text mining and data mining, and policies around ethical data practice. Running alongside those, there will be activities to involve the uh, e infrastructure providers in terms of services and both technology and data interoperability uh, and science demonstrators where we bring the research communities in to actually see how this works for uh, their, their research projects. And on top of that, activities to engage the uh, larger community and particularly around skills and um, um, training and, and, and uh, for, for researchers in data management and using technology and so forth. And the key thing here is this is very much about consolidating and integrating because there's already activities in e e these areas. It's about bringing that together, not reduplicating it and seeing how it applies to an open science cloud to take uh, research forward. So that's where we are today and that's my interpretation of how we got there.